Hi, uh, today we're going to talk about a quick tutorial about how to start vermicomposting at home. So I will show you what we have here. These are my two boxes of red wigglers. The species is Asenia andrei. And I have here some materials that I'm going to explain to you uh, of, that we're going to use for propagating these red wigglers into new boxes. Yeah? So I'm going to talk, I'm going to take you through the process of uh, making up a new bean. So uh, the materials we have here, I will show you now is uh, this is soaked cardboard. This is shredded card cardboard soaked. Yeah. Soaked cardboard. And the, the other material that I will show you, this is just uh, manure. Yeah. Manure that is also soaked. Yeah. Manure that is soaked. And I can use this. Uh, it is optional. You might use this manure or if you have it or if you don't have it, you can use um, peat moss or uh, cocoa core or whatever, even in the substitution of the cardboard. These are the materials that I have, but you can substitute this by uh, cocoa core, uh, shredded paper, um, peat moss or so, and this is uh, what, what we have. So uh, I will show you the other things I have here is I have pre-composted uh, this is a compost which is not finished, uh, but is a compost of grass clippings and paper. And I will use this uh, as a feed for my worms, yeah, for my established beans. Uh, this is uh, this is not hot anymore. Not uh, it's cooling down, complete, almost completely cool, uh, cool down. Uh, this is a, uh, will go for the maturing phase now. But as it goes for the maturing phase we can feed this to the worms very well, okay? Um, so let's start by looking at our red wigglers and uh, uh, starting this process, okay? So here's my first box of the red wigglers. I always put these uh, cardboards in between. They have... Uh, some some you know banana peels that I'm, I'm always adding here and there but as you take this away i'm just going to show them around for you um how they are looking so here is where i last fed them uh the 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 watermelon yeah the, where i last fed the watermelon so if you look here when you want to harvest the the worms what you actually want to do is uh, f feed them and use the feeding to separate the worms. Yeah, As the worms concentrate in the fresh uh, feed, this is where you want to take them and remove them for the new box. Uh, so uh, this is uh, commonly what is done for harvesting the compost. In my case, I don't want to lose any cocoons that it's in the, the, the castings. So I'm going to just continue using the same castings and propagating it, uh, them as is, okay? But let's make a demonstration of how to do this propagation using the fresh worms that I have here. And I will give this uh, worms for Rhonda, uh, which is a, a, a professor of organic farming on our university, and she can use them for, for herself, okay? Uh, so let's prepare, let's prepare um, a new box mixing first the bedding and then I will add new 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 worms like I showed you now okay so I'm gonna use this uh, as a box for making the, the new box for Rhonda so it could be that you are receiving uh, you are receiving uh, worms per mail or cocoons per mail the process is the same you're just gonna prepare your bedding material uh, uh, day before you receive it. And when your worms arrived or your cocoons arrive, you will mix it with the fresh bedding that you have. Then you're gonna wait for about a week until they are well acclima acclimatated to your environment. And then you can start feeding them your kitchen scrap, your food waste. Yeah? So what I will do now is I will just uh, mix 
in this environment uh, in this new box uh, gold manure and cardboard gold manure and socket cardboard and um, I will mix well here and but the, the other thing I have not mentioned is the uh, grid, which is in this case is uh, eggshells. You can use this is uh, uh, not necessarily you need to use it, but if you have it, it would be good also for regulating the pH, maintaining the pH alkaline uh, or neutral for the worms, avoiding acidification. So yeah. The substrate is ready and prepared, and let's do it now, the transfer of the new worms for this system. So here is the worms, okay? So let's add the worms here, and I will add the, the rest of the watermelon here on the middle also. And I will grab the worms from, for the, the other box also that uh, this is the, the watermelon from the other box and then I will use this also for Rhonda for her um, for transferring for her so if you add the, the worms here slowly they will uh, migrate into the, the bedding and the, this is it it's ready so the last step here is just to cover with dry, with dry bedding. Yeah, the dry bedding that we have, I will show you. It's just more. I have here some uh, dry, dry cardboard that I will use as a mulch for this system. So the ones are already migrating into the the the, the compost here, and I will just add a last layer of dry bedding. And this is ready, okay, with this last layer of dry bedding. Okay, so this is Rhonda's box. I will give this to Rhonda. Uh, and she will be using this to, for her students in organic farming in, in the next semester. So the next thing we, we can do, or that we want to do, is that um, we, if we don't want, if you're not harvesting the compost, what you are actually doing is splitting your vermicompost to avoid losing any cocoon. So if you're just propagating your worms, what you, what you actually want to do is you don't want to harvest it because as you harvest within the vermicompost, some of the cocoons will be taken away. So if you just continue splitting your compost, this will facilitate for you to keep uh, uh, the maximum uh, population that you can have. So I will use these uh, stacked boxes here to propagate doing like this. I was just splitting my compost and I will use half the box with uh, old vermicompost and half the box with the new bedding and, uh, and let the worms uh, equilibrate in this situation. So I, I will just add here half the box with uh, vermicompost containing the worms of course here yeah. the worms and the cocoons are inside here so i have here i will put for this camera you have half the box with vermicompost and worms. You can see here the worms. And uh, also there's a lot of cocoons in here. If I just grab one cocoon for, for the camera to see, there's loads of cocoons in this system. You can see one cocoon here. And uh, you know, what I'm doing here is using the old castings to avoid losing the cocoons that is inside the system. So what I'm doing now is just I will make use the manure on the other half with the cardboard. Yeah? 
a manure in the cardboard, mix it up, fresh bedding, and this is it. Yeah, this is it. And I will cover with uh, dry, with the dry bedding. Oh, I forgot the grit. Yeah, we'll let some grit here also in this system. And that's it. Yeah, so I, I'm just propagating this fresh substrate on half of the box and all substrate on the other half. Slowly, this will be uh, integrated together. Yeah. Always do it half and half because there is, if there is something wrong with the substrate, the worms will by themselves stay on the part that they like the most. So if you do it all homogenized, it's unforgiving. If the worms do not like, they will try to escape. But if you do something wrong and if you're only doing it in half the box, then the worms will stay on the half that they like more. So here. Next step now is just add more dry uh, mulch on top of this, yeah? Dry cardboard as mulch on top of this to avoid the fruit flies, to avoid um, losing too much moisture in this system also. So I'll just repeat this process for the next three boxes. Um, and uh, there's not much more to explain to this, but I will just repeat this process for the next three boxes. And then at the end, I will just complement the remaining boxes with, um, with the, the, the substrate also. So this box is ready. So I will add here some of the worms. You see, there's a lot of worms in here, a lot of babies also. Um, if you look at it from far away, it looks like I'm adding nothing, but there's a, a lot of worms and a lot of cocoons in this material. So once I filled up half of this box, I will now only um, complement with the uh, shredded cardboard. Uh, the manure. Uh, the grit. Mix. And half the box and cover with the dry material. Okay? Cover with the dry material again. Last one here, and then we move for the old boxes. Uh, okay, last one. So you can see here that it's quite a lot of worms in this material. It's also becoming a little bit dry, but it really doesn't matter too much now because I'm adding moist material. See how, how many worms there are here. 
There's quite a lot of worms. Yeah? So some of them are falling on the floor. I will collect them at the end. Okay. So I'm just propagating and multiplying my worms here. And you can see every two months this is happening. You can, the, the volume of worms double. If you want to multiply your worms, you should not harvest your vermicompost. If you want, uh, if you don't want to multiply your worms, you can harvest your vermicompost. And even if you harvest, the population will increase anyway. Uh, so let's continue here with this. Uh, cardboard. Uh, manure. Grit. Mix. Of course, use gloves. Huh? If you if you use gloves, uh, the safer the better. I should have been using gloves at this moment, but any, anyway. All the rest, the rest of the cardboard here. And I have three more boxes of uh, worms that will now be, have enough substrate, fresh substrate that they can multiply and eat. After a week, I will start eat, uh, feeding uh, kitchen waste for these worms. Now let's look at the, the, the beans that I was taking worms from. So these are the beans that were I was removing the worms from. There's quite a lot of substrate here still. And the substrate has a lot of worms, as you can see here. Uh, a little bit dry, but so I just do the same thing here. But for this beans, I will use the pre-composted uh, grass, grass clippings and paper for feeding them in this situation. So for this bean, I will use the pre-composted grass clippings, which are here. So for this bean, I will use the pre-composted material. Uh, actually, I will add a little bit of water here because I feel this is a little bit dry for them. Um, so I will use a little bit of the, the water from the... in the fresh material. Add some more grit. And that's it. Yeah, I will. I will add some more dry material on top later. And the the last box, I will do the same thing. But for the purposes of the demonstration, this is it. I have shown you how to build a new worm bean if you have fresh worms coming. Was the first box that I made for Ronda. And if you want to only propagate your worms, what you can do is only split your beans and add more substrate. Uh, ideally, what you're adding as fresh substrates is the bedding. Wait for a week and then you start feeding these worms again. So uh, the worms can stay a long time eating only high carbon to nitrogen ratio material. They don't have to have fresh food all the time. Um, but anyway, uh, this is the procedure. So when you're harvesting this, what you actually want to do is uh, dry a little bit the material and then you use a sieve uh, something like this yeah like a sieve and then you will sieve your material and you have your warm castings for using on your plates and in your pots thank you very much this is all for today